Welcome to Modern Marketing Messages, the leading podcast discussing the latest and greatest in both online and offline marketing tactics, strategies, and trends. I'm your host, Taylor Karg, marketing content writer at AmericanEagle.com. Today, we're back with another one-on-one interview with a marketing expert. And joining me today is AmericanEagle.com Senior Digital Marketing Strategist, Zaina Yakub. Welcome, Zaina. Thank you so much for coming today. Hi, thank you for having me. So let's start off by having you introduce yourself, including what your role is, how long you've been at the company, and just a little bit about your responsibilities, but not too many details because we will dig into that later. Okay, sure. Yeah, so I'm a senior digital marketing strategist here at AmericanEagle.com. I have been here for just over two months now, but I've been in the digital marketing space for about eight years now. Oh, wow. Yeah, so um, really at American Eagle, my role is very much strategy focused. Um, I build integrated marketing campaigns for a wide variety of my clients, and that basically means taking all of these different um, channel tactics and making them all work together into one strategy that hopefully will drive the success that our clients are looking for. Wow, that sounds awesome. I'm excited to learn even more about your role here. And also welcome to AmericanEagle.com. Yeah, thank Fresh you. meat we got here. <laughs> we love this. So I'm glad, you know, I'm glad we can have you on the podcast so our listeners can get to know a little bit more about you too. Yeah. So what brought you to AmericanEagle.com you know, just over two months ago? So I have really been in the agency space for a while. I actually started my career at an agency specifically for benefits enrollment. And then I kind of perused that into less of a communications, more of a marketing role for uh, nonprofit associations. Um, While I was at um, Association Management Center, um, really focusing on supporting associations, the pandemic hit. And as you know, that just kind of wreaked havoc on a lot of industries, Mm -hmm. including the association industry especially the association yeah. industry. Yeah. Um, and so I kind of pivoted and decided to figure out what my next step is going to be. Um, and that's when I found myself in more of an in-house role at Worldwide Insurance Brokerage. Okay. Um, and I did really enjoy my time there. I just got to learn the ropes of being a marketer that focuses solely on raising awareness and promoting one organization rather than kind of working with my clients specific and unique needs and coming up with tailored strategies in that way. Um, and while I did really enjoy my experience there and I feel like I learned a lot, I really just was craving to go back to the agency space and yeah. really wanting to have that wider variety of clients um, and really just to be able to um, see what those unique situations are and um, really be able to focus specifically on each client's situation and coming up with a plan that really helps drive the K- KPIs that are unique to their business. Well, I'm sure you have no shortage of unique situations at this company with our array of clients. Um, Just a quick question. What did you study in college that kind of led you to do all of this stuff? So I actually studied English and graduated oh. with a degree in English. Wow. OK. Yeah, I think all right. a lot of people are surprised to hear that. Yeah. I mean, um, English to like communications and marketing and yeah. stuff. It's definitely a difference. But I think you could use all of those skills that you've learned. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I really want to say that being a writer and being someone who's enthusiastic about literature and writing, I really would say that it has given me a bit of a competitive advantage in the field. Um, You know, at the end of the day, marketing is based in writing. It's based in good writing. Like, a a lot of the times it's words on the page. If it's not words on the page, then it's a script. Yeah. Or something along mm-hmm. those lines. It's really about using words to touch people emotionally and really convince them that working with your organization really aligns with what their needs are so that they can fill that gap. Yeah. yeah. I went to journalism school. So, you know, you're preaching to the choir here. Everything you just <laughs> said is everything I feel every day. <laughs> For sure. So let's talk about your day to day responsibilities as a senior digital marketing strategist at AmericanEagle.com. Yeah, so I really have a 
30,000 foot view of everything that we're doing for our clients. Um, my role, like I said, is really rooted in that strategy of um, taking all of these different marketing channels and connecting the dots with them. Um, so really my role is to work with a team of specialists all across the marketing sphere. So whether it's SEO, whether it's content marketing or email marketing, SMS, anything social media, anything that really you can think of, it's bringing those all together to come up with a holistic strategy that's really going to drive those goals for our clients. Um, and really, that's a lot of communication yeah. with my team. Um, it's a lot of road mapping and really planning out what we're going to be doing on a month to month basis for our clients. And this is really important, especially on our team, as a lot of our clients do work on um, a retainer basis. So okay, gotcha. um, every month we do have a set number of hours that we need to kind of decide where is our time going to go and what is the most effective use of it for right now. Um, marketing is, as you know, very ever changing and yeah. very quick to change. Mm -hmm. um, and so it is really important to kind of have that bird's eye view and just kind of be that sort of source of empowerment for my team and um, also being there for my clients to really kind of explain those nitty gritties and um, move uh, move us on our path forward. Awesome. So I have two follow up questions from the response you just gave. One, what is kind of your stream team structure like? Do you have, you know, like three people under you or kind of how does that look? Yeah, for sure. Um, so our team structure, um, it can really vary by client, but I right, guess okay. um, overarchingly, um, I work typically with every team. I would have an account manager okay. um, that would really help with the day-to-day -day relationship building with the client. Um, and I'm kind of the strategy side of things where uh, myself and the account manager would work very closely together just to ensure that all of the tactics that we're planning um, over the course of the month or even the coming months are executed. And okay. if there are any roadblocks, um, then obviously that would be um, something that we would resolve together. Um, and then um, really with the two of us, we work with the specific channel experts. Oh, gotcha. Um, depending on the needs of the client, um, you might have a client that came to us with um, content needs for their website. They're looking to really improve that user experience. Um, others might come to us with social media needs um, specifically. And we really just um, work together as channel specialists and strategists to um, really move the needle there based on the exact needs of our clients. Um, and then also um, with those individual channels that we support. Um, it's just also a matter of um, allowing our clients and empowering them to think about marketing as not just those specific channels that we support. Um, it is social media alone. Mm -hmm. It is email alone sometimes. But for the most part, they're all going to need to come together um, to um, really just align and um, feed off of each other um, in order to really make your digital presence um, thrive and take it to the next level. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I you sound like you know what you're talking about. So I'd want you as my <laughs> digital marketing well, strategist. <laughs> and then my second follow-up question um, was, what kind of clients do you work with? Like what, we don't have to name the clients specifically, but what are some of the industries that you have been working at with since coming to AmericanEagle.com? I have some clients in the spa industry, which is really fun. Oh, yeah. That sounds um, nice. Insurance, which was kind of a, a natural progression for me. Yeah. having come from the insurance industry. So that's really fun to bring that expertise here from a digital marketing perspective. Um, I have a couple of manufacturing clients, um, some association clients, uh, state colleges. Mm. It really can span such a variety of industries. Yeah. And that's just one of the things that I love about the job. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And I feel like that kind of makes things, you know, a little bit ex more exciting yeah. in your day to day than just working on one industry, one client all the time. A hundred percent. I think that's just a big part of what I like about agency life is um, I just don't feel like I'm kind of focusing on the same subject matter. Yeah. Every you're not doing day. the same exact thing every single day, which can get very like mundane and repetitive. For and so sure. it's nice to keep things fresh. Totally I totally agree. agree. <laughs> um, okay. So let's take things back. How did you first become interested in digital marketing? I know we talked about you getting your degree in English and kind of you've had held a few different jobs throughout your career so far. What initially brought in that interest to digital marketing? As a lot of marketers will say, um, 
I kind of fell into it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Haven't I, we all? <laughs> yeah, right. So um, like I mentioned, my degree was in English and it really just stemmed from fundamentally a love of writing. Oh, yeah. Um, it wasn't necessarily to, you know, get a job as a teacher, which I think a yeah. lot of like English majors get yeah. when they're in college. Mm -hmm. A lot will relate to, to that. Um, and there's more to it than that. You know, there's there's so much more that you can do. And I really didn't realize that um, until I graduated college and didn't exactly know where to go from there. Yeah. Um, I didn't know really where my skill set would translate in the workplace. Um, and so it made the most sense to me to apply for jobs that are very writing focused. Yeah. Um, I had had a portfolio built with all my different writing um, work and, you know, things like that. So um, it just kind of felt like a natural progression. And that is how I ended up at my first job, um, specifically in communications. Right. Um, so um, I was doing a lot of writing for specific types of marketing collateral. So just kind of um, thinking through what the brand voice and messaging is going to be for each individual channel for each client. Um, you know, that was something that I was doing, but it wasn't necessarily really thinking about marketing strategy. It was thinking about the voice and how we communicate different ideas. Um, and that I think translated pretty naturally to marketing um, because marketing just really involves having that creative edge. Um, and I think having a lot of that writing practice allowed me to um, really nurture that. And it just, you know, honestly it scratches that itch for me. Yeah. Um, I'm an artistic person. Yeah. I'm someone who really has that creative drive and, you know, marketing is a creative field. It is. Um, so I, I really do feel like just, it just was so natural for me. Um, and yeah. Yeah. No, I, I like what you said there and saying that your background in love for writing has helped you out there throughout your entire career because I feel the same way as, you know, someone in like graduating high school, not knowing exactly what I wanted to do and then figuring out that, I, wow, I was actually a really good writer and then going to journalism yeah. school. And I'm like, if I didn't learn those skills, I feel like I would be, you know, a lot worse off in my career than I am now because writing is in everything that you do, no matter if you're an account manager or if you're a digital marketing strategist or any of that. So I like that you said that a lot. Totally. Definitely and, you know, relate. And writing is a skill that, you know, you really need to practice, practice in order to practice, get really, practice. really good at. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and really in, in my marketing practice, I do see it as a tool. Yeah. You know, a tool in my toolbox that I truly think that every marketer should have. Um, so it's just something that has really helped me throughout my career. Yep. Agreed. So what are some qualities or traits you would say is vital for success for someone in a role such as yours? I think being agile, um, understanding that marketing as a field is going to ebb and flow um, a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes I see major changes happen on a weekly basis, and that can be really overwhelming. But if you're someone who has that love for learning and kind of thrives by really taking change and turning that into an opportunity. Um, I think that that's like a that's a huge strength and an asset if you're someone who um, is is like that for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then really just being able to pay attention to everything around you, even in your daily life, um, just really looking at different instances of marketing that you might see and thinking to yourself, oh, that is something that might work for my specific scenario. So I think just being open to your surroundings and to inspiration in your surroundings is going to make you really successful, too. Yeah, absolutely. And I think earlier you touched on um, a lot of your position includes you know, like communication and communication loops. And I feel like that for someone in your role and especially at an agency yeah. style, like communication is a massive you, you have to be good at communicating with everybody on your exactly. team and you guys especially because you're talking to clients on a daily basis mm -hmm. and working with all these different roles within our company Absolutely. too so yeah I can't 
can't imagine how crazy that can get sometimes. <laughs> yes, it can be. It can be pretty crazy, but I think it just really leaves room for us to um, create these really meaningful and trusting relationships with our clients um, and really being communicative and having that open line um, with our client teams and also internally yeah. um, is really key to our success because of all these different moving parts that we um, work with um, and just really... Um, an example. Um, one example I would say of how I like to communicate with my clients and keep that open line of communication is through our digital marketing roadmaps that we have um, across our entire digital marketing team. When we have a digital marketing client, we um, really like to build out full roadmaps of our exact plans for the next month. Um, and is that what, just for to clarify for people listening, is that kind of what the roadmap is, is like a fully built out plan of exactly, what, exactly kind of what you guys want to do yes okay absolutely um and it really just allows our internal team the transparency um to what is going to be happening in the next month it gives them some action items to kind of get started on and complete um and then also it allows our clients um to be able to take a look and see exactly what is going on um with their partnership at americaneagle.com at any given time um we like to share these ro roadmaps with our clients and you know have them be uh, living and breathing documents that are updated um, consistently so that our clients have that open line of communication so that they have transparency into everything that's going on. Yeah, I think that's extremely important, especially when, you know, clients are paying us for retainer hours and stuff, then they can see exactly what, you know, their hours are being used for and what their team is doing. Exactly. Exactly. Awesome. What would you say are some challenges that you face in your role and how do you go about solving them? My biggest challenge, or at least from my perspective, yes, my biggest yes. challenge. We'll go to we'll get to like client challenges. Okay. Cool. Next question. But yeah, from your perspective. Cool. Um, from my perspective, my biggest challenge is anytime I have to deliver bad news to a client. It's I just, can't even imagine because yeah, we do not work with, we're <laughs> as internal marketing, you know, we don't really get to work with clients too frequently. Yeah. So yeah, that seems very hard. <laughs> it can be difficult, you know, especially when you set out on a strategy that maybe, you know, the client team and all of us just felt really confident in. And then as we kind of continue on and implement, we find that maybe what we expected you know, was not exactly what we thought it was. Maybe our results were not where we wanted them to be. Um, and that's that's kind of my struggle is just having to kind of break that news and let them know, hey, um, it's not really going exactly as planned. Um, but that's where that communication and transparency piece comes back in. Um, I think that our clients at AmericanEagle.com know that we have their best interests at heart. Yeah. Um, and no one wants to be the bearer of bad news. But, no, you know, not it at has all. to be done. You know? Not at all. <laughs> and really, I, I do um, see it as really having that opportunity to continue to improve. And like I mentioned a couple of times, marketing really just changes sometimes by the week, sometimes more frequently than that. Yeah. I honestly can't imagine. Um, and so I really do like to see that as an opportunity to try something new. Yeah. And you don't know if something's going to work necessarily unless you try. So exactly. It, you know, and I think that shows initiative from you guys that's trying new things and getting new ideas out there. Exactly. And, you know, in order to get closer to that goal that we might be um, targeting for a client, we need to experiment. And sometimes that experimentation might not go exactly yeah. as planned. Mm -hmm. And that's totally OK. And I think it's a part of the process. Um, and like I said, um, by communicating with my clients and just really, truly having their best interests at heart, um, they really start to see that, you know, the the web in general is such it works at such an ebb and flow. Um, and it just really allows them to understand just the tens and tens of factors that go into having your marketing and your web presence be super successful. Yeah. Um, and really, we just we continue to learn and we continue to build. Um, but I do. It, it is always difficult at first to kind of gather your thoughts and, you know, try to find a path forward before we deliver those needs to the client so that they know that we still have success in mind. Even yeah. If, and are still working yeah. you know, on a path to solve things and mm -hmm. put them out in a positive direction. Yep. Yeah. Wow. 
Well, I'd want you to deliver our bad news, you know, <laughs> if we had any. <laughs> you know, I'd rather not, but okay. <laughs> so moving over to client challenges, what would you say is one of the biggest or just most frequent challenge you see with your clients when it comes to their digital marketing strategy? And how do you guys kind of work to solve them? For my clients, I find that SEO is a pretty big struggle. Um, I think SEO as a channel is one of those that is very much playing the long game. Yeah, it's it's a lot of time and effort. Yes, a lot of time and effort and a lot of patience. Mm -hmm. Um, And not only that, but Google changes up their algorithm way too often. And sometimes that means when we conduct a remediation for SEO three months ago, it may not have as much weight as yeah. is it might have, you know, three months ago and we're yeah. going to have to pivot. You know, it's just it's a lot of staying on top of what is going on across the entire web and just also having that real time view um, of those web metrics and just making sure that we're on top of um, any of those metrics that, um, you know, might be showing us a sign of um, needing to make some SEO remediations. Um, but I also do think, you know, it it can just be difficult to kind of sit down and wait for those results. Yeah, because people Um, want things, they want good results and they want them now. Exactly, (laughs) exactly. Um, And, you know, um, one way that I like to see it is, you know, search engines specifically, I guess in this example, Google. um, Ultimately, search engines want to see high quality original content. Yeah. Um, And that is a big reason why SEO works the way that it does. It's so that search engines have the ability to crawl and find the most helpful information that's available for a specific query or specific types of keywords. Um, And so if you just fundamentally set out with a strategy to put out the most helpful content to your users, um, to really know who your users are and meet them where they're at, I think that that's that's really just going to take everything to the next level. Yeah, absolutely agreed. Mm-hmm. And I I definitely can understand the SEO struggles. <laughs> for sure, for sure. It takes a while. It's a lot of effort, but I think it's one of those things that incrementally, little bit by little bit, um, if we can kind of get those things done, if we can be patient with those, um, we really just see sites make leaps and bounds with yeah. good SEO practice. And I like how you said you, you have to realize that you need to be in it for the long game, which kind of helps like shift your perspective yeah. on like, oh, I know this is a lot of time and effort right now, but it, it will come. You just have to keep putting in the work. For sure. And I think, too, those Google algorithm changes can make it very tricky because, you know, our clients sometimes come to work one day and find that all of their web traffic has gone down. Yeah. And no one really knows why. And sometimes it's completely out of our hands. Yeah. Sometimes it's just the algorithm. And we just kind of have to take that and roll with it. It's Google's world and we're just living in it. <laughs> True. <laughs> So with the rise of social media and influencer marketing, how do you see the landscape of digital marketing changing? And what opportunities or challenge does this present? Oh, I love this question. I feel like I could talk about this forever. Let's go. I'm really (laughs) passionate about this. Um, I I really do. um, I've reflected on influencer marketing quite a bit. And I mean, for me as a digital native, um, I've seen influencer marketing you know, from its inception yeah. all the way to what it looks like today. Um, and really what it boils down to with influencer marketing is audiences want trusted sources of information. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they want to make decisions based on um, what a trust, trusted source is recommending or advising. Um, and a lot of the times within that influencer sphere, they have cultivated an audience that really, really trusts them um, and will take their words and their recommendations to heart. Um, so I'll be interested to see, um, with influencer marketing, just kind of taking hold, um, specifically on social media at the same time as AI. Yes. Um, yeah. I'll be just really fascinated to see how that changes the landscape. Um, a lot of, uh, you'll hear a lot of brands, you know, maybe trying to leverage AI for their content to really streamline those processes that can be really lengthy and cumbersome. Mm-hmm. Um, but 
it doesn't take long for audiences to kind of sniff out these things. Yeah, you know? yeah. The well, the very robotic sounding exactly. posts. And, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're already kind of seeing it that AI generated content does have its own type of cadence. Yeah. And I, I wonder at which point, you know, if there's any way that that'll ever translate to influencer marketing, if that's something that once audiences start to pick up on, if it'll have like that direct impact yeah. um, mm-hmm. on, on that type of influencer marketing. So it's just interesting to see both come up at the same time and yeah. I I will be interested to see how it goes in the future. And I feel like in, just in my experience, I feel like in, influencer marketing is so like saturated these days. Yes. I swear every time I log on to like Instagram, there's a new somebody else that I know is trying to be an influencer, yeah. you know, all this stuff. So it really is interesting to see how this is all going to play out, especially how you mentioned and I didn't even think about it, but with AI yeah. and all of that. AI generated influencer. Yeah. Maybe? <laughs> That'd be wild. That would be wild. <laughs> <laughs> so what is like one or two common mistakes or misconceptions you've seen in digital marketing and how can they be avoided? I think it's viewing marketing by channel, viewing marketing by specific channels. OK, gotcha. Um, it's it's easy to get caught up in let's say social media marketing yeah because that is all the rage all the right hype, now yeah right it's easy to get caught up in just email marketing or just um sem search engine marketing but at the end of the day if you're not tying all of those efforts with all of those channels together you're just not really going to get the results that you want um yeah you know, with with marketing, specifically digital marketing, by connecting those dots, um, you're really going to be able to meet your audience exactly where they're at, no matter where they're at. Um, so um, I think viewing marketing as a holistic practice, um, as not just a one and done thing, you're constantly having to evolve your strategy, um, platforms and channel best practices change all the time. Yeah. Um, so I think I think it's it's an it's a mistake that's easy to make to just kind of view one channel at a time and not all of it together. Um, but really, once you can get to that point where everything kind of makes sense as a holistic package, yeah, um, that's that's when you're really gonna soar. Yeah, and I feel like that's kind of your job on a daily yeah. basis is to you know convince clients of how they need to take this integrated approach, and then you get you know other people involved from throughout the company in different roles and stuff and really figure out a plan to mold everything together. For sure. So I think that's, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. For sure. What has been your favorite part about working at AmericanEagle.com so far? Um, oh man, I've been loving my time here so far. Oh, good. I, I can't so believe glad. it's only been two yeah. months. Um, <laughs> time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> yeah, no, truly. I would say my favorite thing is just the level of trust and autonomy that I have. Um, I have incredible managers who trust that they hired someone to do the job and to do oh. the job well. Awesome. Um, and so just being able to, um, just kind of think through things um, while having the autonomy to do so um, and just kind of seeing those strategies come to light. Um, that has been so rewarding and so incredible. And, you know, that that doesn't mean that the resource, resources aren't there. Yeah. Um, there is just so much the breadth of, you know, knowledge and resources and people that we have here at American Eagle is really next to none, I think, especially in the agency space. Yeah. And just kind of that holistic focus that we have on all the variety of marketing channels and having them work together. That's just something that makes us really unique as an agency. Um, and, the, you know, the uh, like I said, going back to kind of that support, my managers are absolutely incredible. Oh, good. Um, I'm so glad everything yeah, is going so well for you. I know. It's yeah. been so great. And anytime I've needed the help, you know, I feel like there's always someone who's going to drop what they're doing to help, which is just so nice to have that support. Um, and then also just to have that mobility, we have office offices all across the country. Yeah. Um, you know, I come up to our headquarters in Des Plaines pretty often, and then I work out in Chicago. So just having that as a resource has really helped me stay productive and just, um, allowing me to kind of connect with my coworkers as well in person. So it's, that's been really nice. Awesome. I'm so glad it's be- going so well for you. <laughs> yeah. I love that. 
So what advice would you give a digital marketer that's just starting out at a new company? Like what is something that you wish someone would have told you before coming to work here? Yeah, I love that question. Um, honestly, I would say read books. Um, not just marketing oh, I books. Love that. Um, just all kinds of books, all kinds of works of like creative literature. Just really dive into those. Um, and I feel like I get weird looks sometimes when I say <laughs> that. It's like, what do you mean read books? But Honestly, good writing, as I said, I feel like is one of the cornerstones of good marketing. Yeah. Um, and I feel like, I mean, what is good creative writing? You know, it's capturing people's attention and evoking an emotional response, right? That kind of convinces them to take an action. Um, and as I said before, you know, marketing a lot of the times boils down to using your words. Yeah. Um, so really being an avid reader, I think, really allows you to... Um, train your brain to just see what is good writing, um, what what evokes that response, um, what isn't working. So I think just really being able to tune into that um, is going to give you that competitive edge. Um, and I know I mentioned um, in another question is just to kind of take a look around you and get inspiration from um, marketing tactics that, you know, maybe you have witnessed out in the world. Yeah. You know, did you see an Instagram post for a shoe store and then they went and retargeted you on TikTok. Notice how you responded to that, you know, as a consumer. What did that make you feel? Did it prompt you to take a different action? Are you seeing it more than once? Is that working or is it annoying? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I will say there's a caveat to that um, because one of the lessons that I learned is that just because you reacted a certain way to something doesn't mean that your audience will. Yeah. Yep. And that's why, you know, I think there's nothing more important than making those data driven decisions and letting that hard data guide your next steps instead of that anecdotal sort of evidence. Yeah. Which it can be very, very helpful and very insightful. But, you know, you do want to back that up with with objective data just to make sure that all the decisions that you're making um, make sense. Yeah, that's excellent advice. And I I mean, just as a fellow writer myself and going back to you saying like reading books and kind of gaining perspectives from your perspective, what types of books do you like to read to help you like gain inspiration in your career? Honestly, like I said, fiction, just any types of fiction. Um, I have been getting into nonfiction lately, like just the memoir genre has been yeah. really awesome for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually would say that has been a really good source of inspiration for me because you're reading up on someone's story. Someone is telling you a story about who they are, how they got to where they are. Um, and a lot of the times that's what brands are doing with their marketing as well. It's telling the stories of their brands. Yeah. So maybe, you know, paying attention to how others are telling the stories about their lives um, can help you translate that as a marketer to telling stories about your clients' brands or your brand. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. You hear that, everybody? Read more. <laughs> <laughs> so, Zaina, I have one last question for you, and sure. that is, what do you envision as the future of digital marketing? Are there any exciting developments or trends that you believe will shape the future in the coming years? Mm. Yeah, that's a big question. I would say we're going to see digital marketing become a lot more personalized, um, a lot more of that one to one feel. I know that's something that we try to figure out, my clients and I, as much as possible. You know, how do we make our marketing as relevant as possible for our audience segments? And then moreover, how do we make our audience segments as specific as possible? Um, and I think we're going to get to the point where hopefully we're really able to parse that down and really figure out um, the specifics of who our audience is by audience member um, and being able to do more of that type of segmentation, being a lot more sophisticated. Um, I think we'll probably see more of that um, in the near future. And um, I know for a fact Google is, like I said, pushing more and more for that original high quality content. Um, so I will definitely say um, AI writing is all the rage right now, but yeah. I don't I don't know if it will be for long. Or at least the way people are viewing using it, it or yeah. viewing it right now. I think it has a long way to go. It does. But it'll just be a matter of 
you know, humans figuring out how to work with it like that. Yes. But yeah, we still have a long way to go for it to get to the kind of writing that one humans want to actually read and two that Google will actually, you know, boost up on the search. Exactly. Engine, so. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I learned yeah. a lot about you and about your role here and you seem awesome. So, you know, if any of our clients get you as their digital marketing strategist, they're in for, you know, an excellent time. So thank you so awesome. much. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to Modern Marketing Messages. For more information about the topics discussed today, check out the description of this episode. If you like this episode, follow the podcast wherever you listen to them to stay up to date with us. While you're at it, give us a rating and share this podcast with others. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Modern Marketing Messages. This episode is brought to you by AmericanEagle.com Studios. I'm Taylor Karg, and I'll be back with another Modern Marketing Message.